Adolf Hitler was an Austrian. True, he had served in the German army in World War I, for which he had to get special permission as a foreigner, but also he had a criminal record having been found guilty of treason and initiating a putsch in which four police officers were killed. In 1924's trial, he had avoided being deported after the end of his sentence thanks to a friendly judge. However, if he wanted to hold high office in Germany, then he needed to hold German citizenship. Whilst Hitler was in prison, the Bavarian state government sought to deport him. In a letter dated the 28th of March 1924, just before the end of Hitler's treason trial, the Munich Police Department officially asked the Upper Austrian Provincial Government in Linz whether they had any objection to deportation. At first, there seemed to be nothing to prevent a deportation to Austria until the Austrian Federal Chancellery under Chancellor Ignaz Siepel became aware of the matter on the 27th of September 1924. On the 11th of October 1924, orders were issued to deny Hitler entry to Austria should he attempt it, giving the reasons that he had been outside Austria for more than 10 years and had served in the German army. This information was reported by several newspapers. On the 20th of December 1924, with Hitler's release from prison, the Bavarian government abandoned its plans to expel Hitler as they had nowhere to deport him to. In order to prevent a later threatened expulsion, Hitler applied to the appropriate office in Linz on the 7th of April 1925 for his release from Austrian citizenship, writing the following letter. I request my Austrian citizenship be cancelled. The reasons are that I have been in Germany since 1912 have served in the German army for almost six years, including four and a half years at the front, and now intend to acquire German citizenship. As I currently do not know whether my Austrian citizenship has expired or not, but entering Austrian soil has been refused by an order of the federal government, I ask for a favourable decision on my application. On instructions from the Vienna Federal Chancellery, the governor of Linz agreed immediately. However, Vienna asked for this to be kept as secret as possible to avoid any press articles. On 30th of April 1925, Hitler's request was granted for a fee of seven and a half shillings. As a result, he lived as a stateless person on German soil from this point on, although just to be on the safe side, he kept his Austrian passport. According to Article 41, Paragraph 2 of the Weimar Constitution, the office of President of Germany was reserved for Germans. Hitler bore that in mind. In July 1925, an attempt was made to get the citizenship of Thuringia, which failed. An attempt was made at the end of 1929 to get citizenship in Bavaria. This also failed in view of Hitler's political past. The easiest way to obtain German nationality was by getting a job in the civil service, as this automatically resulted in naturalization in accordance with Section 14.1 of the Reich and Citizenship Act of the 22nd of July 1913. At that time, the assembly of the state of Thuringia had 53 seats, 28 of which were occupied by the government coalition. This was the first state in which the Nazi party was in power, albeit with only six seats of the 28 in the coalition, which also included the German People's Party, the German National People's Party, the Thuringian Landbund, and the Wirtschaftspartei des Deutsches Mittelstands, the economic party of the German middle class. This government was in office from the 23rd of January 1930 to the 1st of April 1931. Wilhelm Frick was state minister for the interior and education. In 1923, he had been head of the Munich criminal police during the Beer Hall Putsch. 
Then he attempted to thwart the reaction of the police to the attempt to overthrow the government. One of his subordinates realized what was going on and reacted. Frick was arrested, found guilty of treason alongside Hitler, but although police officers had been killed in the putsch, he served only five months. In this famous photograph, he appears alongside the other leaders of the putsch, taken just before the sentencing hearing. Frick tried to get Hitler a post in the State College for Crafts and Architecture, the successor institute of the Bauhaus in Weimar. This was blocked by the Thuringian head of state, Erwin Baum, and by the Thuringian state government for constitutional and budgetary reasons. Only a few months later, in July 1930, Frick had another goal. This may well have been suggested by Erwin Baum, who said it might be arranged in the summer, when things have quietened down and when the state parliament is not in session. Frick secretly arranged for Hitler to be appointed Gendarmerie Commissioner in a 10-person agency in Hildburghausen, a town of some 7,500 people. It was agreed that Hitler would have to forego doing any work, but also forego any pay. Once he got his nationality sorted out, Hitler was to resign and the person who should have got the job would be appointed. This was done so secretly that not even Hitler was informed. Hitler was appointed on the 12th of July 1930. Hitler seems to have given the matter some thought, then he turned it down. Maybe because, as Führer and leader of the German people, an advisory job in the Thuringian backwater did not appeal to him. Or maybe it was because he realised that there could be a political backlash to this, as there was, as we shall see. The Nazis had also been in the ruling coalition in the free state of Braunschweig since October 1930. The Nazis held nine seats in the 40-seat assembly, having come third in the elections of that month with just under 23% of the vote. They had formed a coalition with a grouping of conservative parties called the Civic Unity List. The party, which had most support in Braunschweig, the SPD, which received 41% of the vote, was thus in opposition. The interior minister was Dietrich Klages, who joined the Nazi party in July 1931. The head office of the Nazi party in Berlin ordered him to arrange for a quick and inconspicuous naturalization of Hitler. Goebbels noted in his diary on the 4th of February 1932, it is intended to appoint the Führer in Braunschweig as an associate professor. One of the first official acts of the coalition government in the Free State on the 30th of November 1930 was to allow the government to employ who it wanted, in positions it wanted, regardless of ability. Thus, they ensured jobs for their friends and associates. Klages tried to get Hitler appointed to a university role. The Nazi party had planned to keep this secret from the public, but it was exposed during the budget debate in the Braunschweig Landtag when SPD opposition leader Heinrich Jasper demanded an answer to rumours about a professorship for Hitler. At the same time, the management of the Technical University of Braunschweig learned about it. The university management refused to approve the plan, as Hitler had no academic qualifications, and the overall intention, and indeed request, was perceived as being unreasonable. This, of course, made Hitler the subject of a great deal of mirth once the press got a hold of it. The next plan for Hitler's naturalisation came from the Prime Minister of Braunschweig, Werner Kuchenthal, who suggested offering Hitler the position of acting mayor in Stad Oldendorf. Stad Oldendorf then had a population of under 5,000 people. The undertaking failed immediately due to the refusal of the state parliament. 
In January 1932, the attempt to get Hitler the post at Hildburghausen two years earlier came to light. A number of prominent Nazis, including Rudolf Hess, Josef Goebbels, Balder von Schirach, Gregor Strasser, Wilhelm Frick, Fritz Saukel, and Fritz Wackler, as well as Hitler himself, were questioned. However, the Committee of Inquiry was split four to four down party lines, half being the former coalition partners and the other half the socialist and communist opposition. Therefore, no further legal prosecution was possible. In Braunschweig, the main aim of the Nazi leadership was to ensure that Hitler received German citizenship in good time before the presidential elections on the 13th of March 1932, so that a quick and above all discreet solution had to be found. The Nazis needed to involve their coalition partners. The latter, whereas not opposed to Hitler being given nationality, did not want to expose themselves to ridicule. As the professorship at the Technical University had already been rejected, another idea was to grant nationality to everyone who had served in the German army in World War I. This also was rejected. On the 17th of February 1932, Hitler's legal advisor Hans Frank arrived in Braunschweig and met with local politicians Ernst Serner, Karl Heims and Friedrich Alpers to discuss how Hitler could be naturalised. The following solution was agreed. Hitler would be given a position in the Braunschweig Embassy at the Reichsrat in Berlin. The Reichsrat was the assembly of the 18 German states. This clearly was just as much of a sham as all the other attempts had been. On the 24th of February 1932, one day before the appointment and two days before the swearing-in, Klages stated in an official letter that Mr. Hitler himself rejects that his appointment is bogus and on the contrary attaches great importance to doing the job. For the purpose of being nice and legal, Ernst Zerner permitted Hitler to pretend that he was living with him and registered him at his home. Here we can see the registration document of the 26th of February 1932, when Hitler apparently moved in, and deregistration document alongside it of the 16th of September 1933, when apparently Hitler moved out. Hitler began his employment at the Braunschweig legation at Lutzowplatz in Berlin. Well, at least he would have done if he'd bothered to turn up for work. On the 26th of February 1932, Hitler was sworn in and received at the same time the citizenship in the free state of Braunschweig, which also made him at the same time a citizen of the Reich under constitutional law. He was thus able to take part in the presidential election. On the 1st of March 1932, the State Parliament approved the new Government Council Office with the votes of the Nazi Party and a local coalition called the Burgish Liste Einheits Liste, well, I suppose that's the Civic Unity List, comprising of people from the DVP, DNVP and Centrum, as well as a, an independent. Thus formally finalising the naturalisation of Hitler. On the 28th of February 1932, Hitler applied for leave to take part in the election campaign. This was granted to him on the 5th of March 1932, as well as permission to retain his apartment in Munich as his main residence. Hitler went on to lose the presidential election to Paul von Hindenburg, as there were no more presidential elections, Hitler need never have bothered applying for German citizenship in the first place. On Hindenburg's death, two years later, he appointed himself Führer, thus linking the roles of Chancellor in and President in one. The Constitution had made no provision for this. Indeed, Hitler had invented the post of Führer by himself. 
none of the political parties which had helped Hitler, the DVP, DVNP or Centrum, were in existence 16 months later. In October 1932, Hitler applied for an indefinite leave of absence from his official business as the ongoing political struggles would not allow him to fulfil his official duties in the near future. Since it was not clear to the public or to the opposition politicians in the Braunschweig Landtag what Hitler had actually done for the state, the opposition applied to find out just what exactly Hitler had done. On the 26th of January 1933, it was announced that an audit of the remuneration paid to him and the services that he had provided for it would be performed. This was conveniently forgotten once he became Chancellor, only four days later. This leads us to consider what might have happened had von Patten, Hindenburg and Hugenberg not conspired to have Hitler appointed Chancellor. Might his citizenship have been revoked following the audit? That's just a question, completely hypothetical. On the 16th of February 1933, Less than a year after his naturalisation, the now incumbent Chancellor Adolf Hitler requested in a short telegram to the government of the Free State of Braunschweig to release him from the civil service. This was granted to him with immediate effect. He may have done nothing to get his salary, but he did remember. On the 27th of January 1945, With the world crumbling around him, he remarked in a social setting that he was once a member of the government in Braunschweig for a while. Goering replied, but you didn't do anything. To which Hitler replied, oh, don't say that. I brought the country great benefit. As to what that great benefit might have been, you can make some comment below. Let's fast forward 75 years. 23rd of February 2007, that's the 75th anniversary of the day that Hitler was naturalised, Isolde Salman, who was chair of the local SPD association in Braunschweig and member of the Lower Saxony State Parliament, requested that a legal check be made on how Hitler's German citizenship could be revoked. Well, they had a look at this, and according to a statement by the Lower Saxony Ministry of the Interior, in March 2007, such a withdrawal is not formally possible because the servant, civil servant is dead, and therefore uh, the relationship that that person has with the state has expired, and a dead person doesn't have any rights anyway. So there's no rights to take from that person. In addition, the withdrawal of citizenship would result in Hitler becoming stateless again, which the basic law for the protection of Germans against expatriation prohibits. A loss would only be permissible according to Article 16, Paragraph 1, Sentence 2 of the Basic Law. If the person concerned does not become stateless as a result. And as we know, Hitler had given up his Austrian citizenship in 1925. So therefore, he couldn't have lost his citizenship even if the Lower Saxony State Parliament had decided to take it from him. That's probably just as well, because that means it's not necessary to repeat the 1932 presidential election. So I hope you've uh, enjoyed listening to this and uh, thanks for being here. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my channel. I publish a video at eight o'clock every Friday. That's eight o'clock Central European time where I am. And so that's seven o'clock in the UK and all sorts of other times in other countries. And I sometimes publish things at other times as well. My specialization is in the period of the Third Reich and in particular in the Holocaust, although I do occasionally publish things on other uh, themes as well.